Hyatt's Dwyer, proud pet owner, also owner of GamblersAdvisory.com, WireVIP.com for premium picks. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're also there. Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. A few subscribers here on YouTube, knowing that I'm a lawyer, have been a trial attorney, um, was a former associate editor of the Stanford Law Review, they've asked for my opinion on Magnumet Abdus Salamov's lawsuit against numerous people arising from the injuries he suffered in the Mike Perez case. Now let me just highlight some points here. I don't know the full facts of that case. But I believe most lawyers, perhaps most disgruntled pets, would consider the following factors in analyzing this case, right? There are two theories that leap out at me. The first is the argument that the defendants failed to stop the fight, right? That Magnumed should not have suffered the injuries he suffered had the parties, those operating under the purview of the New York State Athletic Commission, right? Perhaps the ring doctor stepped in, realized that he was struggling in the fight, and stopped the fight. That's the first argument. I don't believe it's a winner. Understand that a fighter's corner always has the opportunity to stop the fight. If you're going to make the argument, quite frankly, that the fight should have been stopped because it was so apparent to everyone at ringside that Magnumed was getting beaten up, even though he hadn't been knocked down in the fight. Well, if it was so obvious, if I'm a juror, I would ask myself, why didn't his own corner stop the fight? Let me go one step further. I know the laws are designed to protect fighters from themselves, but I would also ask myself why Magnumed himself didn't stop the fight. Right? Fighters can always pull the plug. Roberto Duran told the referee, no mas. Right? So I don't consider the fail to stop the fight argument to be a strong one. I believe the better argument is the other grounds for filing lawsuits like this. And it's the idea that the people who examined Abdus Salamov after the fight failed to meet the proper standard of care. They failed to provide proper medical attention. Let's talk about what the standard of care is. It's the level of attention and type of care that a reasonably prudent and skilled professional would have provided under the circumstances in that context. Right now here you have an issue and I believe the case hinges on this. You have an issue of whether after Abdu Salamov told the doctor following the fight that his head hurt. Right? You have the issue of whether the doctor responded properly with the appropriate tests, treatment, and follow-up. Now apparently what's not in dispute, according to reports, is that Abdus Salamov, after the fight, said that his head hurt. There's disclosure. Right? Non-disclosure could have torpedoed the case if a reasonable doctor could not have detected from Abdus Salamov injury. But here you have the fighter actually saying, my head hurts. Apparently what's also not in dispute is that the post-fight doctor then administered a neurological exam 
asking Abdul Salamov to read a series of numbers. Now, what will be an issue? And understand, trials really come down to fact-finding and application of laws. What will be an issue is whether, in fact, Abdul Salamov passed that neurological test. Was it properly administered? Right? Based on his score, what should have happened? Are there other tests that the doctor should have provided him? What was Abdul Salamov's physical condition? Was it such that the reasonably prudent doctor in that setting would have immediately ordered an ambulance for him? Right? Apparently, too, his problems were such that the doctor recommended that he see another doctor when he got to Florida. Did that meet the standard of care? Or should the doctor have immediately sent him to the hospital? Right? These are the questions. Then, of course, and I think this is a big one, was the facility set up to actually transport Abdul Salamov to the hospital? According to reports, he wasn't even able to take an ambulance to the hospital. Believe it or not, here he was at an arena with thousands of fans leaving, and he had to compete with them in trying to hail a cab to get to the hospital. Now there are rules in place, and of course, I'm sure his legal team is going to point out every violation of a rule, right? The New York State Athletic Commission has rules for the promotion of fights. Someone ultimately is responsible for having things like ambulances at boxing matches, right? The question is who was responsible? Right? Whose duty was it to have an ambulance there? And if the ambulance was there, whose duty was it to contact the ambulance? Right? Those are the questions that will be decided at trial. Understand, too, not all the players are on equal footing. Local legislators actually have absolute immunity from personal liability, from private section 1983 causes of action. These are the kind of claims that individuals can file against elected officials. The elected officials have immunity as long as they have acted within the scope of their legislative capacity. So understand some of the players the New York State Athletic Commission is going to have some immunity for some of their actions, right? Just as a public policy, we don't allow individuals to sue government officials who are acting within their jobs in good faith, right? But understand not all of the people acting that night in serving Abdul Salamov were government officials. You have, or employees, right? You have what's called independent contractors. Often doctors are independent contractors. 
right? When you're an independent contractor, you aren't cloaked with this immunity. And so the doctors who are independent contractors who examine Abdul Salamov after the fight, the ones who spoke with him had first-hand knowledge of his physical condition, were responsible for administering things like neurological examinations, and were responsible for referring him to an ambulance if necessary. Right? They are the ones who, quite frankly, face civil liability. Now let me just tell you the way things operate in the real world. Doctors will often have what's called malpractice insurance. Right? For exactly situations like this. Anytime the doctor is treating a patient and for whatever reason there is an open question that's subject to debate on whether that doctor satisfied the applicable standard of care. Some risk assessment person at the insurance company that of course backs the doctor's malpractice insurance realizing the costs of going to try, realizing the costs of possibly having the insured found negligent will often step in, in part also motivated in a high-profile case like this by public relations concerns, might actually step in and settle with the plaintiff. I believe that's what quietly is going to happen here. Right? There were other people around. The quality of the witnesses is going to be paramount. There were other people around when the doctor spoke with Abdus Salamov. Now let me point out that there are going to be issues of bias. Right? A fighter's honorage often has people who, quite frankly, rely on that fighter to pay their own bills. Right? Chances are these are the people who were around Abdul Salamov when he was being questioned by the doctor. My point is these people care for Abdul Salamov and understand that if they say the doctor did his job. If they say the doctor thoroughly questioned Abdul Salamov, if they make the claim that Abdul Salamov didn't disclose his condition to the doctor and tried to fool the doctor, looked fine, looked great, was coherent, was lucid, was well spoken, answered the questions without any delay, was well coordinated balance wise. If they say that, they're going to be hurting their friend's case. Right? It's literally a matter of differing recollections. If this goes to trial, you're going to have different people who are in the room giving you their recollection of what happened. Now, given that Abdul Salamov is in a hospital, he was in a medically induced coma for a long time. Given that his career is almost certainly over. Given that he's in bad shape with big time legal bills. The kind of legal bills that have promoters doing private fundraisers for him. You can imagine the people who care for Abu Salamov are going to want at least some money to go to his medical care and treatment. Right? Doctors, unfortunately, as defense attorneys know, and I've been both a plaintiff's attorney and a defense attorney in medical malpractice cases. But let me just tell you, doctors are viewed as deep pockets. There isn't just a legal dynamic to 
cases like this, there's a political one. You don't want to get in front of a jury against a plaintiff who, quite frankly, is in very bad physical condition, right, can no longer provide for his family. And then, of course, argue to the jury that your perceived wealthy client, and keep in mind, doctors might be wealthy, they might not be wealthy. I'm sure there's some people watching this video who vividly remember their med school student loan bills, who vividly remember the medical malpractice premiums they were paying. The problem, though, is everyone looks at a doctor and they think in terms of general hospital. They're going to think that the doctor, of course, has big time money behind them. And, of course, it doesn't help that the doctor is insured and the feeling is, of course, the insurance company has hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars at its disposal to pay the bad off plaintiff. So I'm expecting settlements here, right, both to save the doctor's reputations and also to compensate a fighter who, quite frankly, should have at least been transported by ambulance to the hospital. Right? A fighter who, simply put, immediately after a grueling fight, told the doctor that his head hurt. Right? On 24-7, Pacquiao Bradley, they actually show you Timothy Bradley being loaded into an ambulance. After that fight, there's an ambulance there at the MGM Grand. Right? Bradley, who had sprained ankles, didn't have the head trauma that Magnomed Abdusalamov had. So here, to sum up, I believe there is enough questions here, right, concerning Magnumed statements to the doctor, the tests administered by the doctor, Magnumed's physical condition and how that should have been interpreted by the doctor, whether the doctor should have immediately referred Magnumed to a hospital and whether that cure, had it been immediate, <clears throat> would have saved Magnumed from the clotting and problems that he had. There are enough questions here to literally lead to a settlement of the case. I'm expecting this case to settle. Right? Understand too, I know there are people out there online talking about assumption of risk. Nobody assumes the risk of bad medical treatment. Right? Just because you play in a hazardous sport Right? A sport like, let's say, football or boxing, where there's brain trauma, concussions, doesn't mean that you've ever agreed to subject yourself to bad medical care or treatment. After a fight, when Magnumet says, my head hurt, in my opinion, the doctor had an obligation, and I believe the doctor would agree to this, to follow up on that, to find out the extent of his injuries, right, to physically examine him and to conduct neurological exams of him, right, to find out his mental state at that time, right, if a jury concludes that a reasonably prudent doctor would have immediately referred him to the emergency room by ambulance then the doctors who examine Magnumet after this fight are in trouble in terms of civil liability. I believe they understand that risk. My prediction is that this fight, excuse me, this lawsuit ultimately settles. Let me also point out that in a high-profile suit like this, the lawyers are going to go all out. There's going to be no stoppage. Because, of course, even if Magnumet can't pay his lawyers, 
the lawyers will realize that this is the kind of high-profile case that's going to give them greater exposure to the community, right? The lawyer will, quite frankly, be compensated by future business, not present business. I also feel, too, that the state of New York, which makes a lot of money from boxing matches, will want this matter resolved. Because, of course, boxing's a lucrative business. It brings attention to the state. It brings dollars to the state. You don't want to be the state that looks like it's hard and playing hardball with fighters who gave their all in fights and who after the fight told you they had pain who for some reason weren't then provided ambulances to an emergency room. So I'm expecting a settlement, I believe. This lawsuit has legs. While the while some theories, like the idea that they failed to stop the fight, don't have legs to me. The questions raised by the quality of the medical attention that MagnaMed received after the fight, in my opinion, do have legs. Expect a big time settlement here. Let's all hope that MagnaMed is able to walk and talk again. So whether or not he can get back in the ring, he could at least be a father to his kids, a husband to his spouse, and a good friend to his friends. Let me hear from you. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear from you. Thanks for stopping by.